Hi, welcome to this Tamanu Community Features demo. Don't worry, it was pre-recorded so you didn't miss a session. Um, we want to introduce you to our new bed management section, which will be available in Tamanu version 1.26. So we look forward to everybody upgrading to 1.26 and checking in with your project manager on how to use this specific for your facility. I'm going to talk through three things today. The first thing is this summary panel up here, which is our um, quick snapshot of information. The second thing is the patient table down here. And the third thing is the use of the handover notes. So jumping in, section one. The first reminder is that bed management facility one means that all this information here in this top panel pertains just to this single facility. So if you want to check what information you're looking at um, 45 total current patients, that relates to the whole of the facility. Now later we'll talk through some filters that we can apply to the patient table. That doesn't change anything that you see up here in the summary table. So the summary table always remains data relating to the whole facility. So our first indicator is the total current patients and this is the total number of active inpatient, emergency and outpatient encounters across the facility. So if somebody comes into this section where you select admit or check in, whether they're a hospital admission, a triage encounter or a clinic encounter, that number all contributes towards this 45 total current patients. Our next indicator is current inpatient admissions and this is just those with an active hospital admission. So it doesn't include anyone who's in ED or triage and it doesn't include anyone who's got an active clinic encounter. Um, so this is just looking at active inpatient hospital admissions. The next indicator is our average length of stay. And this is looking at a time period of the last 30 days at all times. So what we're looking at here is the sum of length of stay for patients that have been discharged from a hospital admission in the last 30 days, divided by the total number of patients discharged from a hospital admission in the last 30 days. And that gives us the average length of stay. So the amount of time that people are spending divided by the amount of people that have been discharged. So we are looking here at the length of stay, which is the date of discharge minus the date of admission. So a quick note here to make sure that if you want to see these numbers reflected correctly in the bed management panel, you need to make sure that you're adding people, um, admitting people and discharging people at the time that they are admitted and discharged. And if you do it after the fact, make sure that you um, backdate the time so that we are getting an accurate time of when a bed is actually taken up and when it is freed. Moving on, 85.7% is our current occupancy at the moment. So again, for facility one, we're at 85.7% current occupancy. And the calculation there is the total number of inpatients in a location that has a max occupancy of one divided by the total number of locations with a max occupancy of one. Now to get this max occupancy, that is something that your project manager will have done or can do via reference data. So we add a location group, which might be a ward, and then we add the number of beds that that ward has. So you can see a summary down here, we've got ward three, bed one, bed two, bed three, and bed four, all in ward three. Now, because they are individual hospital beds, the assumption, unless we are told otherwise, is that a single bed can fit one person. Now, if there is a waiting room, that will not have a max occupancy because obviously we don't know how many people are in the waiting room and we're fine with there being more than a certain number of people in the waiting room. So here in Tamanu, when you first set up your deployment, you will add your areas, your locations, your location groups. And for each of those locations, we assign or don't assign a max occupancy. And in most cases where you have a single hospital bed, a single chair, a single space that is designed for one patient, the max occupancy will be one. Now you'll hear that term max occupancy a couple of times throughout this um, demo. And the idea there is that if we have set a place with the max occupancy of one, as soon as there is more than one person in that position, you're at overflow or you're dealing with more patients than your hospital or your facility is sort of designed or planned to deal with. And we want that to be able to replicate in this bed management board. So that is an important note here that if we're looking at 85.7% to keep in mind that it is possible for us to end up at over 100%. Um, I'll give you an example here. If we change the area here to Ward 2, 
you can see here we've got ward two, bed one, ward two, bed two, and then bed two is actually listed three times because we have three occupants allocated to bed two. Now it might be that there is one physical hospital bed in bed two and then you've had to put a mattress on the left of it and a wheelchair to the right of it in order to fit Caroline Floyd and Jack because we have overflow and they are very sick and they need to still be seen so we had to make a space for them. So we want all three of those patients to be able to have an active Tamanu encounter and we want them to be able to be documenting their notes, their vitals, everything in Tamanu but we had to put them somewhere and we want that to reflect in our bed management that the facility is over capacity and that bed two is actually taken up by three people. So just keep in mind that if this number goes over 100%, that is intended and that is to show that you've been very busy and that you've got now greater than 100% capacity and you're in overflow. Again, this number will not be contributed to by anywhere that has a max occupancy of over one. So a waiting room and whatnot won't contribute to that. If you've got an overflow area, um, it's up to each deployment how you handle an overflow area. It might be that it you know, five patients overflowed, you can handle it and you then go to that extra percentage over 100%, but that you cannot have anyone more than five. So then you could set the max occupancy of that place at five. But again, anywhere that's set over one is not included in the denominator there for current occupancy. So this might be one that you need to talk to your specific project manager about and make sure that what you've got um, set up for your max occupancies in your reference data is correlating to how you want to treat each of those spaces and each of those overflow areas. But generally it's a one, one to one ratio of, we expect there to be one person and we're treating it as a one person bed. The next section here is readmission in the last 30 days. And what we're looking at here is the total number of current inpatients who were admitted within 30 days of a previous discharge from an inpatient encounter. Now, obviously we won't know if somebody has been an inpatient, if they didn't have a Tamanu admission. So this is looking at Tamanu. If the patient came in and had an active inpatient admission, then they were discharged and then they were readmitted as an active inpatient within the next 30 days. So it doesn't count if they came to triage, they went to ED or they just went to an outpatient encounter. Um, we expect people to be interacting with the health system. We don't really you know, think that it's a point of note at this point if somebody had an outpatient encounter and then they readmit, it is a readmission as an active inpatient in the last 30 days. So there's a lot of information coming at you. Please feel free to uh, send us an email and ask any questions that arise out of this, not to make it any more difficult, but I also talk quite fast. We next move on to our final panel in our summary section, which talks to the number of locations available reserved and occupied. And this is basically pulling this status information up into the summary panel. So here we're looking at the number of locations, again, with the max occupancy of one that have a status of available. Down here, we've got 11, occupation, uh, 11 occupied locations. And this is the number of current locations with a max occupancy of one that have a status of occupied. Now in between those two, we've got the number of locations reserved. And that is the number of locations with a max occupancy of one, again, where the status is reserved. And that will be in a situation where somebody has planned a patient move to that bed, but they haven't yet finalised it. So you can reserve a location by saying, we plan to move Caroline up from bed two into bed one, and that will switch that this is now going to show, I can do that now for you, that will then show a location of one. What ward was she in again? Ward two, bed two. So we'll go move patient. Ward two, we'll move her to bed one. Tells us that it's available. We're just in planning. Confirm. Go back to our patient list, back to bed management. It's now updated and we see that one location is reserved. And we can see here that it's reserved. Now, again, this information is relating to the whole of facility one. We move down now to the patient table and here we can filter by area. So area is generally what we call, um, you can determine however you'd like to use area in your deployment, but in a larger hospital setting, it would usually be a ward. So you can he see here that we can filter by individual ward. We can also filter by the status. So if you wanted to see how many beds are available in ward one, you'd filter by available, but we only have two beds available in ward one. 
We can move that away if we want to see what's going on across the whole ward. And now we can see all four beds in Ward 1. Here we've got the heading in the grey bar. Anything that has this little V next to it means that you can sort it by that. So you can sort by status occupied or available. So I can sort this by location and then I press it again, it will revert to 1 to 4, sorted 1. So you can use whatever is useful to you here. So here we're looking at area, location, average length of stay for the last 30 days. Now here the average length of stay in the patient table is looking at the sum of the length of stay for patients discharged from that location. So here we're looking at ward one, bed one, um, in the last 30 days divided by the total number of patients discharged from a location in the last 30 days. So we might find a ward with a number in it. Yeah, we can see here that for ward two, bed one, the average length of stay has been six days. So you can see here that we've gone sum of the length of stay for patients discharged from a location in the last 30 days divided by the total number of patients discharged from a location in the last 30 days. This is probably going to make a lot more sense to everybody once you're using it for your own areas and you can check what your understanding of length of stay is for how your patients use your beds and how you use your bed management um, with move patient and whatnot features. Um, but we are here in this one looking at just an individual bed. So all the things in this row just refer, refer to ward two, bed one, whereas up here we're looking at the whole facility. Um, the occupancy here is looking at the, whoop, looking at the bed occupancy for the last 30 days, which is the number of patient days divided by 30. Number of occupants is looking at the current number of patients assigned to the location. Now, generally, because we're working on a, you know, the assumption that most of these beds have an occupancy of one, you want to see a single bed have an occupancy of one. This bed is the status of available, so its occupancy is zero. But as we know, you can have overflow. So here we've got occupancy of three in bed two. Now, it doesn't physically mean that three people are in bed two. It might get a bit squishy. What it more means is that we've had to put multiple people in a place that's usually only limited to one because we're at overflow. Um, then it's the name of the patient, which again, you can sort alphabetically by clicking on first name, you can sort by last name, or you can sort by status of the bed. And this information here is all editable to what you see based on just clicking on changing your area, or you can turn that off and just see available beds across the whole facility up to you how you'd like to use this but just note again it doesn't change anything up here this still stays facility-wide information um, we will show for example now ward 2 and we will have a look at handover notes so you see when I have nothing showing here handover notes is not applicable so you can't look at handover notes for the whole facility you can only see them area by area so if I click on ward 1 and we hop in, you'll see now that handover notes are available. So what we can do to add a handover note is find our patients. So we've got Regina, patients, inpatients. Let's click, we've got Ward 1 already selected here, which is handy for the demo. If we go into Regina, go into her current encounter, notes, new note, type, handover note. New handover note, demo, add a note. So now you can see we've got a couple of handover notes for this one patient. We go back to bed management. We've got Ward 1 filter on again. We click on handover notes and we can see here handover notes for demo. So you can see the date that you've accessed the handover notes the time that you've accessed the handover notes. And here you can see the time that the handover note was written. So someone asked for morning bloods, post-transfusion for casein. And here you can see that that was requested on the 12th. So if somebody said to do something tomorrow, obviously now here we are looking at a note that was made on the 12th. You would hope that was done on the 13th. Um, and this helps us to see who made the note at what time. Instead, well, not who made the note, but 
at what time the note was made so that we don't need to worry too much about putting the date in the actual text. This is the, letters, the Ministry of Health um, letterhead, which is all configurable in Tamanu, and of course you can print that if need be. Now it's probably up to each facility to work out who is going to use handover notes, if it's the process that's for the nurses, if it's the process for the doctors, if it's both, who's going to use it and how. And the idea of it is that it's sort of broad and configurable and anyone can use it in any way that suits your deployment. But the important thing would be to have that conversation and make sure that everyone's using it the same way. Um, like with most things with Tamanu, anything is possible, but it just needs to be done by everybody to make sure that people know where to check for information and whatnot, nothing gets missed. Um, I think that's all for today. Um, as always, with our listing here, I'll just do a quick reminder that if you scroll down here and it say, says rows per page 10, 1 to 10 of 57, you obviously can only see the top 10 here. So if you were to export that there, you would only get the top 10. So you need to change the export to be or the list to be about 50. And then you still also know that you need to scroll over that one last page to get everybody because you've got 57. So don't forget that you can see that limited view there, but there is often more information available. As always, any questions, please let us know. Um, please feel free to email or get in touch. And if you are not on 126 and you'd like to be so that you can make use of the bed management section, please let us know. Have a great day. Bye.